Good morning. Uh, for those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Nick Jones. Uh, welcome to the Olympia Church of Christ so on this uh, Sunday, January the 9th, 2022. So I'll start off with some reminders this morning. Uh, so the service is being live, live streamed or broadcast uh, for those that are not able to attend in person. Uh, you can also uh, listen to it on 88.7 FM uh, from the parking lot. Um, and during the church service, please refrain from using the Wi-Fi as that will affect the uh, bandwidth for the live stream. Uh, if you're unable to attend, we do have the, uh, the TV programs, Channel 11, uh, Sunday 7 a.m., Channel 22, uh, 8 a.m. and Wednesdays, 10.30, Friday, 8.30. Uh, we do offer in-person classes Sunday morning and Wednesday night services. Sunday morning is the, the 9.30 a.m. class uh, taught this morning by Gary uh, Abraham, a man of faith. Very good class. Uh, Sunday, the youth class also at 9.30 by Ji Wu, uh, personal faith. Uh, Wednesday, the adult team class, 7 p.m. Ji Wu is doing uh, virtue formation. Uh, see the, e the electronic bulletin for the uh, links for the Zoom classes and live streams. Uh, as a continued reminder, we do uh, ask that everybody uh, wear masks while inside the, the building uh, during all the services. Uh, and the, on the Facebook page, there are the Three Minute Thursday devotionals uh, provided by Don and Jiwoo. Uh, they're very good, so I recommend checking them out. All right, we'll go on to announcements this morning. So. The children's ministry volunteer meeting was moved to uh, the 16th uh, following the services. Everybody is welcome. Um, if you need some more information, um, talk with Javier or Jiwoo. Uh, also check the bulletins in the, uh, the foyer. Uh, Mission Sunday is today. Um, so uh, we'll be praying. We'll be praying. Uh, ah, goodness tripping up on my own words. Um, please be praying about what you can pledge and give towards the mission work. Uh, the, the little sheet will be handed out uh, after the um, uh, communion. Adults wanted to uh, share faith with teens. So if you are willing to talk with the teens about your faith, uh, please get with Jiwoo. Um, next Sunday, the 16th, we'll be doing uh, ice skating and spaghetti social for the children and the teens. After the service, uh, please RSVP uh, to Jiwoo by the 12th. Um, I'm not good at calendar math, but I think that's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Wednesday. Um, Thurst the Thurston County Food Bank is always in need of food and volunteers. So if you're able to or would like to uh, provide that, please um, check out the bulletin board or uh, you might be able to talk to Vonnie about uh, uh, doing that. And the Northwest Expositors Seminar is being held from January 17th through the 19th. Uh, that's gonna be at Camp Yam Hill in Oregon. Uh, the bulletin board out front uh, in the foyer has additional information. All right, we will do the scripture reading this morning. Your scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. But how are they to preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. Please bow with me as we pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you for everybody that is able to attend virtually or here in person. Please watch over us. Please guide you through his the teaching this morning. Please allow us to have open minds to understand and receive your word and practice what is being taught. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning. To prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, we're going to be singing six, number 514, 514.
Let's sing. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. service we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, I'd like to read from John 3, verse 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. In uh, Matthew 26, Mark 14 and Luke 22, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And uh, 1 Corinthians has a warning for us. Uh, chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which, which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. At this time, I'd like to pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we each have to remember the broken body of Jesus on the cross for our sins. Help us, Lord, to do this in a manner that pleases you. This, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
And at this time, I'd like to pray for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, again, we come to you thanking you, asking that you bless this fruit of the vine, which is Jesus shed blood on the cross for our sins. Help us, Lord, do so in a manner that pleases you. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Today is Mission Sunday, or in which we're going to uh, pledge uh, so the elders can budget what we're going to uh, contribute to and promote. Um, after the prayer, uh, there'll be pledge cards handed out. And uh, there's, if you're in the auditorium, there's a drop box to place your pledge, or you can do it online on the Church of Christ website electronically. So will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities you give us to, to earn an income and to share that income in spreading the gospel. Help us, Lord, always to share your word with others around us and Please bless this, these donations uh, with uh, help us to open our hearts to, to this method and to this mode and to give generously. We thank you again for these opportunities. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. The song before Jigu's lesson is going to be number 622. 622 and the song of encouragement is gonna be 867. So 622 now. If you're able, please stand and we'll sing the song together. Let's sing. There's a message true and glad for the simple and the sad. Bring it out. It will give encouragement new, it will help them to be true. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Let's see still far from Jesus, baby. Bring the new that made and free to all the lost of every nation. Oh, 
Jesus made me sermon title, People with a Mission, because we are a people with a mission. Now, we're going to look at mission as we, as our topic of the day concerns the missions that we'll be uh, supporting throughout the year. And as you have all received a pledge card and an envelope, and I'd like you to really consider this week, today. And all throughout this week, how you can participate and how you can support the mission efforts that we as a church together uh, support and work towards. Because ultimately, it's not a work that we humans do, but we are participating in the work that God is doing. We are participating in the mission of God. And so I would like you to consider that proposal today. No, I don't know what you think about me right now. I don't know if you think I'm a trustworthy brother in Christ or an uh, immature uh, young little man. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and it's always difficult to, I don't know if this is true of you as well, but it's always difficult to do an honest assessment on my current self. Okay? Yet, you know, one thing I do know clearly and that is that what I was before meeting Christ was a sinner in need of repentance, a need of redemption and salvation. And what I was before Christ and what I'm now, right now, after meeting Christ is night and day difference. Because when I was without Christ, when I was not within him, when I did not need him, when I didn't kneel and pray to God and confess my love for him, when I wasn't broken down in humility, when I didn't meet him in power, when his word was not living within me, but I was just circling around it, expressing my justice, expressing my selfish desires. I was lost before meeting Christ. Recently, I had a chance to look at my uh, passport, okay? Um, and that, that was taken uh, 20 years, well, not 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 10 years ago when I was in college. And I remember taking that picture. I remember that very day. 
are taking the picture. I, I just woke up um, from sleep. I was in Queens, New York at the time. I was uh, on my summer break after my first year of college. I was, a, uh, I was going into my sophomore year and I was not a happy young man. I was not. When Anna looks at my passport photo, she comments and said, why is daddy angry? <laughs> I wasn't meaning to be angry during the photo. I wasn't meaning to be unhappy when I took the photo. I thought I was just took it, taking the photo for my passport. I didn't think about it, but you can tell from my facial expression that I was not unhappy. I was not a fulfilled person. I was trying to find fulfillment in other things in life. I was trying to find meaning and happiness where happiness did not reside. I got into a lot of trouble. I was a slanderer. My sentences were filled with cuss words. You will not believe that. <laughs> I cannot speak without the F-bombs or the S-words or whatever. Okay? It's like that has been ingrained into my DNA, or so it seemed back then. I was not a nice person. In fact, I hurt a lot of people in speaking with them and dealing with them and having a relationship with them. I hurt a lot of women, especially. My mother in particular. I hurt her so bad that she had a seizure because of me. I was a person who was in need of mercy. I still regret that to this day. And I met Christ and everything changed. And boy, that was a life-changing experience. When I knelt for the first time, when I prayed for real for the first time, that was a transformational experience. From that point on, although I wasn't perfect right from the get-go, I was on the journey towards transformation. From that day on, my perspective changed. From that day on, my interactions changed with people. From that day on, I started to watch how I speak, how I behave, how I walk, how I carry myself. From that day on, I really worked hard to be a better man. I really worked hard to be a better husband. I really worked hard to be a better father. Each of you, each of you who have been baptized, have also been transformed. This experience that I had is not my own experience, but all of our experiences. No matter how dull you think your conversion experiences were, you have been transformed from the inside out. You have gone from a person who was lost to a person who has been found. Yeah. Your spiritual DNA has completely changed. You're, you were without love, but you are now found in love. Each of you have been transformed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. I love this passage by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. If you can turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. It says, do, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. 
but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And I say amen to that. I was them. I was them, but now I'm a child of God. By the very fact that I've been washed, I've been sanctified, and we're justified by the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ and the powerful Spirit of God. So that we could live free from the crushing weight of our sins, free from those transgressions, free with true joy at last. And whenever I think about this conversion experience of mine, whenever I think about other people's conversion, we can't escape the very fact, we can't look over this very fact that when we receive the gift of life, there has always been a person or an assembly of people of God who acted as heralds of the gift of life, of the good news. There has always been an agent somewhere in your life that has planted the seed, that has walked with you to show you the true meaning of life to show you true meaning of walking righteously and justly. True meaning of what love looks like. Love not of this world, but a love out of this world. There has been that someone that has shown us the way. And those who know this shout out from the bottom of their hearts, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And thanks be to God that they have obediently and bravely answered the call to bring the good news to me and to each of you sitting here. They were people with a mission, and that's what today is about. And these people exist because from the inception of the church, as you look in the PowerPoint, we have been called out for a mission. We are the people who have been called to participate in the mission of God. And so when Jesus commissions his disciples, in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. One of the last words of Jesus Christ to his disciples was this commission for a mission, to participate in the mission of God, to go, therefore, out to the world, into it, teaching them, baptizing them, making them disciples, showing them and spreading the good news of God. And you know what? This mission is the best mission. Because it's not sharing something that we don't believe in the efficacy. Of. It's sharing something uh, that we have so uh, we have so much joy in. Sharing of something that we have benefited from. Sharing of the best news that transformed our lives for the better. And it does not diminish. It does not expire, no matter how often or how how uh, much you share. It only abounds and it only creates a bigger family of God. It only multiplies the joy we can share together. So are, we a, are we a people with a mission? Are we a people with a mission? You betcha. Do you believe that you have a mission in this world? It is the best mission yet. Yet, while we know that everything we do should somehow contribute to the mission of God, there are some who have been called further out of their comfort zones, their home, their family, to invest their whole life to be a herald of God's message. We know that not everybody is going to be a missionary out in a foreign country. We know that not everybody's going to be an evangelist. We know that not everybody's going to be a teacher. 
There have been some who have been selected by God to go out, who have been called, and who have answered the call, who have braved the call, who have been obedient to the call. And the church always provides support for these individuals. So we're going to look at several scripture verses to give you evidence of that. The church was always behind those who went out, providing them support, entrusting them with the funds to help those who are in need. So if you turn to Luke chapter 10, 2, this is a teaching of Jesus Christ, actually. Now, it points not to those who are uh, evangelizing, but those to those to teach those who are uh, really receiving them. So if you look into Luke chapter 10, verse 2, it says, he told them the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into harvest. Now go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I was confusing Luke chapter 10 and Matthew chapter 10. But Luke chapter 10 is uh, talking about um, uh, Jesus entrusting others to go. There is a harvest that is plenty. There is harvest that is plenty. And there are, the laborers are few. Yet some of those few people have answered that call to go to the harvest. And it's really um, our obligation to support those who have braved the call. If you turn to Acts chapter 11, this is uh, concerning the famine relief mission that uh, the people in Antioch uh, decided to support. And they decide to send two people. So Acts chapter 11, 27 to 30, it says, In those days, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there will be a severe famine throughout the Roman world. This took place during the time of Claudius. So each of the disciples, according to his abilities, determined to send relief to the brothers who lived in Judea. They did this, sending it to the elders by means of Barnabas and Saul. So they decide to send Barnabas and Saul as uh, missionaries for this mission of famine relief. Acts chapter 13, 2 to 3. This is when Barnabas and Saul uh, are commissioned by the Antioch church to go out to preach the gospel because they have been set apart by the Holy Spirit. As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work I have called them to. And after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. Now, uh, we can't imagine the church sending them, thank you, sending them without any kind of support. The church doesn't operate that way. Now, if you turn to Philippians chapter 4, this is Paul thanking the Philippian church. 16 through 18, for the support that they have given him. And it reads, For even in Thessalonica, you sent gifts for my needs several times. Not that I seek the gifts, but I seek the profit that is increasing to your account. But I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance. I am fully supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you provided, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Philippians the members of the Philippian churches were very generous with Paul and his mission. Matthew chapter 10. And this is a kind of attitude that uh, the people who are in support of those who go out or to those who are in need of uh, home as they travel. So, uh, it says, the one who welcomes you welcomes me, and the one who welcomes me welcomes him who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who's wel who welcomes a righteous person because he's righteous will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives just a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is a disciple, I assure you, he will never lose his reward really gets to the heart of what support looks like for these people, for a prophet 
who are in, uh, who are in need of hospitality, who are in need of these kind of support. Romans chapter 16, 1 through 2, it talks about um, a woman named Phoebe who has been in support of Paul and his mission as well. And she is called the benefactor of many. So Paul says, I command to you, speaking to the Roman Christ uh, Christians, our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church in Sancreia. So you should welcome her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and a sister in whatever matter she may require your help. For indeed, she has been a benefactor of many and of me also. Uh, part One of the reasons why she's called the benefactor is probably because she was a wealthy woman. A uh, wealthy woman existed at the time, and they have provided support, uh, for example, for housing in churches or for those who are going into missionaries' uh, work. So uh, she participated in supporting uh, Paul. Romans chapter 12, 13. It's a general command, but indeed, I think it also gets to the heart of the mission. Because we are to share with the saints in their needs and pursue hospitality. And especially for those who are working hard for God's mission. And 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 4. It says, now about the collection for the saints, you should do the same as I instructed the Galatian churches. On the first day of the week, each of you is to set something aside and save in keeping with how he prospers so that no collections will need to be made when I come. When I arrive, I will send with letters those you recommend to carry your gracious gift to Jerusalem. If it is suitable for me to go as well, they can travel with me. Now, uh, the saints in Jerusalem were living in poverty during this time, and Paul was going around uh, the Galatian Galatian churches and general, Gentile churches in general, starting with Galatia and Asia to uh, Thessalonica and other places in Achaia and, and Greece to uh, get contributions to help those who are the saints in need. And that, that is a mission in itself. And the churches, the Gentile churches specifically, that is us, have specifically participated in this mission in support of it. And 2 Corinthians 8 also talks about that, 8 and 9. I want to get in there because we're going to read from that chapter. But I want you to read that chapter, that whole chapter, when you get a chance. Now, I think I provided enough evidence that the churches are always in support of the mission. And the mission of God. And those who go out there in person. Our congregation also has several areas of the mission of God that we can support financially. And if you have your bulletin uh, with you, there has been a sheet that was been included in it, with it. And I want you to reference that as you go along these following slides. So in the front is, has uh, missions 2022, and it lists the kind of missions that we support. Number one, Delano Bay Christian Camp. This camp was owned, is owned by Churches of Christ and overseen by a board of directors. And this year, um, we have had camp um, after following a year of break. And we have supported uh, teens and children uh, in this camp uh, this, during the summertime. And they come from all over the nation. Although we had a small number this year, um, this has always been a blessing. And a lot of our teens and a lot of the young adults here have grown up going to this camp as well. And this year we have increased the uh, budget to $3,000 for this. Orphans Lifeline International. Uh, this work began years ago to help US citizens to adopt children from Russia and uh, support this inner. Uh, organization supports over 17,000 orphan children through financial contributions, and we provide support uh, in that as well. 
Truth for today, Bible printing. Um, Bible and scriptural, scriptural literature is being printed in scores of languages and distributed to help native preachers with scripturally sound study materials. Okay. And this is the work that Truth for Today does. And, and we support that financially. In Search of the Lord's Way, uh, we always get a reminder every Sunday that In Search of the Lord's Way, uh, Search TV program uh, is also playing every Sunday and Wednesday. And this is the kind of work that we support. Uh, it's a TV station uh, that plays, uh, provides sermons and, and songs as well. And we support that annually. Christian Chronicle uh, is a newspaper for the Churches of Christ. And it seeks to inform, inspire, and unite Christians through relevant news and event reporting. Um, and you can also receive a free subscription to this publication if you wish. You can see Gary about that. Uh, but we have been, for, for many years, we have been supporting this news. Next one is uh, the Apologetic Press by Brother Dave Miller. Um, as the uh, name suggests, he provides a lot of reading materials and apologetics and how to think about some current issues that are difficult. Mountain State's Children's Home. Uh, if you have been with us for a long time, you may have had experience of the Mountain States at, at Change Can uh, Drive that we do every year. But we also uh, support them with a lump sum of money every year. So we support uh, their work. Uh, Randy Scow has also been an instrumental in that work. And so he comes by often, quite often, to talk with us and to interact with us. Now, West Seattle Church Plant, Trent Herber and the team from the Sunset International Bible Institute moved to Seattle in 2019 to uh, work to establish a church in the West Seattle area. Now, Seattle, um, Washington is known to be the least churched state in this nation. And so this Seattle is the least, one of the least churched city as well. So this is a great work that not everyone can, can do. Uh, it takes a lot of courage. And so this needs a lot of support. Um, and so we support that. Faith builders, uh, you might know every year we uh, have uh, these seminars and this workshop uh, intended to build um, uh, or edify the church in this area. So we support that uh, every year and the area churches gather around for this important event to hear from speakers from the, around the nation. Okay. This year, I think Don will be also speaking. Um, next is Focus Press and Think Magazine. Uh, this magazine also like Apologetics Press uh, deals with difficult topics that are current. And so uh, we uh, support that important work as well, because um, in today's society, it's an informational war. Right? Um, unless we provide information based on our biblical beliefs, our, our beliefs will be uh, really routed out from this world, worldly uh, playing field. And so this is an important uh, work. And so we support that. Sunset International Bible Institute. Um, since 2014, Sunset has delivered over 10,000 solar Bibles to countries in Africa, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, and many Arab speaking locations. Um, and they have uh, Sunset Bible courses. And I think some of the members here have benefited from those Bible courses as well. And so, this is an important institution we support every year. And of course, the disaster relief, uh, Churches of Christ disaster relief team. We support that every year as well. There are natural disasters that happen annually. And so we try to support this organization uh, financially so that they can help those who are in need. We also support, support the Ukraine mission, uh, as well as the Ethiopian mission. So each of these, we are budgeting about $2,400 each this year. 
And uh, this is an important work outside of our nation, but nevertheless, uh, very important work to further in the kingdom of God. Uh, and so we personally, because of um, many of us cannot go there annually or invest our time and go away from home and do that, however, the least we can do is support them financially and make, them, make those workers there feel like they can be supported, that they are supported by God's churches. Okay? And that's why we have budgeted that as well. Now, this is a 2022 missions budget summary. It's also in this sheet of paper on the back side of things and how the budget, uh, and the summary of how much we're gonna be budgeting for uh, these specific missions, okay? And you can see the difference. Gary has worked hard on this. Uh, the budget difference, you can see that Delano Bay Christian Camp, we're increasing the budget by $1,000. And so they're, we're only increasing this year. So in total, we are asking um, in 2022, uh, a total of $29,900 commitment throughout the year. And the pledge card uh, allows you to mark how, how often and how much you're willing to pledge so that we have a better idea and that we can meet that mission or that goal for the year. Okay. Now it is an increase, $29,900 is an increase from last year. However, last year you have exceeded the budget by over $8,000. And some of those surplus have gone into this year's. Um, I think about $2,000 have already been raised because of that. So I think we're in need of about $27,000 uh, this year. And since 1994, Gary has uh, calculated the amount, we have given over $585,000 as a congregation to missions, to mission work. That is a lot. And we are so grateful for the continued support from our congregation and the heart that God has given each of you uh, to participate in this great mission of God. So in conclusion, I want to remind you that we have an incredible opportunity to share the greatest gift that we received. You know, it's not just the money that we're sharing. We're asking that you pray for us. You pray for these missions. We're asking that you encourage these workers. We're asking that you also go out in ways that you can and to, to spread the word of God and to further the kingdom of God. But this is an incredible opportunity, an easy way to share the greatest gift that we received, that we cherish. There was someone there who has shared this great news with you. And all those work require financial support. This is a gift that is nothing short of transformational. And you can participate in this mission of God and the church's mission. So I want to ask you today, will you commit to this mission? Will you commit to this mission? And I want to end with 2 Corinthians. The encouragement that Paul gives to the Corinthians as uh, Paul expects them to gather financial support or the fund to bring to Jerusalem. And this is the encouragement that Paul gives to them. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of the service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is over, also overflowing in many acts of thanksgiving to God. They will glorify God for your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with others through the proof provided by the service. And they will have deep affection for you in their prayers on your behalf because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God. So today I want to invite you to commit to this. 
but also I want to invite you. If you are questioning whether you can do this or not, and if you need the prayers of our elders or from our leadership or from the congregation, I want you to come forward. If you want to really experience this deep transformational experience, transformation of life, the change from the inside out, and you want to learn more about Christ and how he can provide that for you, I want you to also come up today. today. We can share with you the good news of salvation. We can share with you what it feels like to experience God. We can all do that by walking with you and sharing with you and also studying the word of God with you. So if any of these are on your mind today, I want you to come up. Today is the best day to do that. Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. And I want you to do that and make a commitment today. So will you please stand with me as we sing? <laughs> seated. Thank you, Jiwu, for that sermon. Um, at the beginning of the sermon, the deacons passed out the pledge cards for the missions. If you're able to consider and fill those out, the deacons will be collecting those now as we prepare for the closing prayer. So we'll pass them to the inside or outside row, and the deacon will be there to pick it up.
Good morning, church. Happy to see all of you here this morning to include all visitors. I'll be reading to you a prayer request. These are people that we need to keep into our hearts, our minds, and our prayers through the upcoming days. For health, Alicia Brooks, Kristen Beverly, recovering from wrist surgery, Thomas and Shirley Burton, Dory Carr for COVID, Tara Carr Sr., stomach cancer, Isa Craft, Meg Holman, shingles, Jim and Jackie Hunter, Jeannie McConnell, Susan Richardson, Lori Scott, Diane Sherman, Garrett Tabor, Alice Yarbrough. Friends and family, help. Ty, Michael Jones's grandson, COVID. Cara Bauer, Dick Lamb's niece, hospice. Michelle Brotherton, excuse me, Michelle Brotherton's brother, COVID. Krista Jacobs, COVID. Bruce McTill, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Joyce Erickson's brother, COVID. Bill Murphy, former member here, hospitalized. Sarah Smith, Loretha Wedge's friend, cancer. Spiritual guidance, Shervon Alexander and Charles Shearmeyer, Joshua Alexander, Ron Beverly and family, Orion Brotherton, Reggie Burton, Shirley Burton, Sonia Harmon, David and Rose Lewis, Marcia Matheson, Connie Murphy, Bill's wife, O'Pelt family, Lon and Susan Richardson, Richard Scott, those who have lost loved ones, all the leaders in harm's way, our elders, deacons in ministry, government leaders. Travel, Beverly Ardemica, Kennewick, Gail Oxley, Hawaii, for bereavement, the family of Jerry Witt, Cindy's McNeely's dad. Jerry passed away recently. The family of Kobe Cathy, Don Jacobs' childhood friend, passed away last week from COVID. Let us go to our Father in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we come to you humble and thankful this morning that you have waken us into another one of your days and brought us together to this assembly to praise your name and, lay, and learn more of your word, which we are to use as your children the way you would like to have us use. Father, we also would like to pray at this time for all the members that are here this morning and for those that are not here, no matter what the reasons may be. Father, we pray for mankind. We know that we're going through some troubling times, Father, and not to mention that some of these things are so troublesome that even discussing them can cause anger, hate, violence, and even result in death occasionally. We pray that as your children, you can give us the will and the desire to do whatever we can, how big or how small, it doesn't matter. We must do something to make things better for everybody. Father, keep us aware of the significance of the sacrifice that your son Jesus Christ did for us, for our sins. Father, this we pray in Jesus' name. It's in his name that we consider him our Lord and Savior and know that he'll always be with us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. 